Hey guys, this is Gavin Phillips from Make Use Of, and I'm going to show you how to install Kali Linux on your Raspberry Pi 3. Let's get started. First up, you need to download the version of Kali Linux suitable for Raspberry Pi and other ARM devices. Head to the Raspberry Pi download page and use the direct link or the torrent to grab the file. Next up, you need to burn the Kali Linux image to your micro SD card. To do this, we're going to use Rufus. Head to the Rufus download page and grab the latest version. Now, head back to the location you downloaded Kali Linux to, then right click and extract the contents of the file using your favorite archive tool. As you can see, I've already done it, but this is what it will look like after you extract the file. Now, to burn the file, in the start menu search bar, type Rufus and select the tool. Under device, select your micro SD card, then under boot selection, hit select, then browse to the place you downloaded the Kali Linux image. Select the image, make sure quick format is selected. Using the default settings, hit start. The Kali Linux image will now burn to your micro SD. When it's done, eject the micro SD, then grab your Raspberry Pi, insert the micro SD card, the Ethernet cable, the HDMI cable, the USB keyboard, and the USB mouse. Finally, attach the micro USB cable to power up your Raspberry Pi 3. The boot process can take a moment to complete and it sometimes flickers, but you'll eventually end up at the Kali login page. The default Kali login is root and the password is Tor, T-O-O-R. When the desktop loads, select the default configuration. Then right click, select open terminal here. We need to update Kali Linux and its myriad tools before progressing. Type apt get update and press enter then let the process complete next up type apt get upgrade this process takes up to 20 minutes so we sped the video up press y to continue and again let the process complete it can take quite a while at this point you need to choose your default keyboard configuration using the keyboard scroll down to your preferred language and press enter the update process will then continue at this point, it will ask you about the configuration of the open SSH server. Select keep the local version currently installed as we're going to change the configuration later in the tutorial. Press enter. Now, when that finally completes, you need to type apt get dist upgrade and press enter. Thankfully, this one is shorter than the others. Now we need to upgrade the open SSH server. Type apt-get install openssh-server to install the latest version. This will have been taken care of in the update process, but it's always worth double checking. Press Y to continue. As soon as this process completes, you need to type, now type update-rc.d-f-ssh remove and press enter. Followed straight away by update hyphen rc dot d hyphen f ssh defaults and press enter after this we need to change the default ssh encryption keys type cd forward slash etc forward slash ssh forward slash press enter followed by mkdir old keys press enter followed by mv ssh underscore host asterisk old keys followed by dpkg hyphen reconfigure open ssh hyphen server this process creates a new folder for your old ssh keys to back them up moves the old keys into that folder and then reconfigures new encryption keys to secure your open ssh connection now when this completes we can edit the open ssh configuration file using the following command nano forward slash etc forward slash ssh forward slash sshd underscore config find the permit root login line and change the response to yes press control o to save and control x to exit if it already says yes just exit the page without making any changes once we leave this page, we need to restart the SSH service using the command sudo service SSH restart, followed immediately by update hyphen rc.d hyphen f SSH enable two, three, four, five. Now we can check to see if the service is running by typing 
sudo service ssh status. And you can see that mine is up and running. Now on to changing the message of the day. The message of the day is what appears when you connect using SSH. Type nano forward slash etc forward slash motd and press enter. You can see the default message here. And you can delete the entire default message and add something of your own. I always add something basic, but you can get as creative as you want. When you're ready, hit control O to save then control X to exit. Now, use the ifconfig command to find out the IP address of your Kali Raspberry Pi. Copy the IP address down because you're going to need it in a moment. If it doesn't work, check your net tools by typing sudo apt-get install net-tools, then run the ifconfig command again. Now, let's log in via OpenSSH on Windows 10. First, check you've got the Windows 10 OpenSSH client installed by hitting Windows key and I, heading to Apps, then Manage Options, Optional Features. Down here, you can see that I have it installed already. But if you don't, you can head up, back up to Add a Feature and find OpenSSH and hit Install. Afterwards, hit the Windows key and X, select Command Prompt Admin to open an elevated command prompt. Now, type ssh root at your IP address. The IP address is the one you copied earlier. Once you've done that, you need to enter your password, which if you haven't changed from the default is still Tor, T-O-O-R. You can sit back and bask in the glory of your message of the day. Okay guys, if you found the video useful, please hit like. Don't forget to subscribe to the Make Use of channel for more tips, tricks, and giveaways. Thank you for watching.